Uh, today we're going to perform a vena puncture on our patient. We're going to use it with the, uh, what's called the straight draw method with just a regular multi-sample needle. It will be accessing in the anti-cubical fossa of the patient's body. What you'll want to do is first you'll want to hand sanitize your hands or if you do not have hand sanitizer available, you'll need to wash your hands in sink. Hum and happy birthday twice to yourself to make sure you wash your hands long enough. With the hand sanitizer, you put a, a small amount in your hand and you rub your hands until they're dry. Then after that, you'll introduce yourself to the patient. Hi, I'm Trevor from the lab. The doctor's ordered some tests today. Do you mind if I collect these samples? So the patients shook their head, no, they don't mind. So with this, I've informed my patient. So I've achieved, achieved informed consent. And since the patient didn't verbalize anything back to me and they have their arms sticking out, I also have implied consent. With implied consent, this is where a patient makes a gesture such as sticking out their arm or shaking their head as they do, do not mind. So I have my consent. We'll go ahead and begin the procedure. The supplies I'll need is a new tourniquet. You'll need a couple of alcohol swabs. You'll need a couple of pieces of two by two gauze. Non-sterile is okay. You'll need your multi-sample needle. You wanna make sure that it's in date and the paper label is intact. This is very important to check this every time. If the paper label is not intact and matching up, we do not use the needle. You'll need your holder or your hub and you'll need whatever uh, evacuated tubes that you'll, you'll use. In this instance, I'm going to use a serum tube and I'm also going to use a coag tube. I check the dates on these tubes, make sure they're both in date, they're good. Make sure that they're new, no puncture marks, everything's good with my tubes. And I also have some paper tape. If your patient was allergic to paper tape, you would consider using Coban. And also I have my lab sample bag. Note the biohazard label. Anytime we send blood specimens, urine specimens, any body fluid specimens, we need to have a bag with the biohazard symbol on it. So I have all my equipment gathered, and let's go ahead and begin with the procedure. Apply the tourniquet. Make sure that it's flush in the back. You try not to let it roll. You want bunny ears up, not frog legs down. You're going to palpate, going across and then come back. All right. And with this patient, I'm gonna choose this, this vein here to do phlebotomy. One of the ways, if you're having a hard time to determine which vein you should choose, is in your book, you'll see that every patient has either an H pattern or an M pattern. This patient right here, he has an H pattern. Here is the outsides of the H, and here's the connecting line across. So I have a vein here I can choose, a vein here and also a vein here. If this patient had an M pattern, a vein would lie here, lie here, here, and here. Okay, so I've chose my vein. I'm gonna go for this one right here. I'm gonna make sure that I have a landmark or uh, something I can determine where, which side I've chose. It can be a freckle, it can be a little mole, a pimple, anything to determine where you're gonna stick. If not, you can slightly take your fingernail and just make a little indention of where you want to stick. That'll last about 30 to 60 seconds. So I'm going to release my tourniquet as I gather my supplies, assemble all my equipment, unscrew, unscrew the label of your multi-sample needle, insert it into the, the holder, tighten it carefully, gather your tubes, go ahead and pull out a piece of tape it's okay to tear off a piece of tape ahead of time and you can place just a small corner on the end of the table. Have your alcohol pads ready. You can go ahead and cleanse your patient before you put your tourniquet back on. But first, at this time, if you do not already, you'll want to put your gloves on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine where I'm going to insert my needle. That's where I'm going to place the alcohol, which is 70% isopropyl alcohol. Start in the center of the patient. And I'm going to do an inside out concentric method, trying to push the dirt away from the skin. 
and you'll always want to check and make sure that the alcohol swab comes out clean. If it had a little bit on it, it doesn't mean your patient was uh, unsanitary. Just take another alcohol swab and swab again. I'm um, going we'll to throw this alcohol pad into the regular trash. Remember the only thing that goes in the biohazard trash is sharps such as needles or used tubes or any gauze or material that's been saturated with 50% or more of blood. Okay, everything else can go in the regular trash. So I've cleansed my patient, I have my needle assembled, I'm letting the alcohol dry, and that'll take about 30 seconds. I'll go ahead and reapply my tourniquet, and this is something that you'll need to do. As you become more experienced as a phlebotomist, you can leave your tourniquet on. Remember, you can only leave a tourniquet on for a maximum of 60 seconds. So I have my tourniquet, and I'm not, now that I have my tourniquet on, I ask my patient to make a fist. I cannot touch the site no more since I've cleansed it. I'm going to release, pull back my safety cap of my needle. You're going to want to release the cap in a downward motion. Check your needle, make sure that you have bevel up. There's no barbs, shards, or any bent material on the needle, and everything's good with this one. Okay. With my non-dominant hand, I'm going to anchor with my thumb. My other four fingers is going to wrap around the patient's arm. What you'll do is you push down and pull back a little bit, and that anchors your patient's vein a little bit. With my dominant hand, it, that's the one I will stick with. All right, here I go. All right, so I have my needle in. And with correct order of draw, the light, light blue tube will go first. We'll let it fill. And this is one of the hard parts is holding steady with the tube as you're drawing. You still want to have a good hold on the needle. Okay. And remember always with light blue, you need to let it fill completely. It's pre vacuumized to stop at a certain amount. All right, so that's full. We'll go ahead and disengage this tube. Insert the next. And sometimes a little blood will come out around the edges. That's okay, too. And one thing that you can look for to help you tell when the blood is done is it shimmers as it's moving, as it moves in. Once it stops shimmering, more likely your tube's full. And this tube is full. It's my last tube, so I'll release my tourniquet. Pull the tube out. Get my gauze, fold it over once, twice. Pull my needle out, cover, and immediately safety cap. Ask your patient to hold the the gauze, sir, will you please hold that? Mm -hmm. And immediately take your needle to the biohazard container. You do not sit down on the table. We must protect ourselves first. All right. Next, we'll grab the tape that you've already torn and place over. You want to instruct your patient not to bend their arm, as this can cause a hematoma. Tell your patient to keep the tape and the bandage on for about an hour. And also at this time, You'll need to invert your tubes four to six times, slowly. If you, if you invert your tubes fast, such as this, yeah, hemolysis is likely to occur. So we want to go slow, mixing the chemicals into the blood. All right. And then at this time, you would put, place your labels on the tube, put the date, the time, and your initials with the patient's name. Place your tubes into the lab bag and carry to the lab. You may also use the pneumatic tube system if your facility has one. You want to be sure to pad the tube appropriately though. And this is how you do a straight draw.